would win in a race between a Jer Falcon and a Bentley Continental GT Speed. Well, the Falcon has raw bird power, one Falcon power, I guess, whereas the Bentley has horsepower, 635 of them. But what does that mean? Well, it goes without saying that lots of horsepower, like lots of cake, is a good thing. But what exactly is one horsepower? Well, it's the power that one horse can produce, which I suppose we really should have seen coming. Yeah, sorry about that. Not helpful? Okay, right, let's take a closer look at the two important parts of horsepower. First, the power part. Power has made its way into everyday vocabulary to describe all manner of things, I guess, that are impressive and impactful. But in engineering, it has a very specific definition. It's all about how much you can move, how far you can move it, and how quickly you're moving it. Let's just get a little bit nerdy for 60 seconds, shall we? When you apply a force to something and it moves a distance, like, say, pushing a book across a table or pulling a man out of a mine shaft, you are, in engineering terms, doing work. Yeah, that's right. Even getting out of bed, if you're an engineer, is doing work. So work is the force that you're putting in times the distance you're moving something. And power is all about how quickly you're doing that work. Push that book along the table faster and it takes more power. Lift a man out of a mine shaft at one mile per hour and you'll need less power than lifting him out at 10 miles per hour. But this also shows us something important. You can also exert a lot of power even at slow speeds if you're doing a lot of work. It takes the same amount of power to lift one man out of a 10 metre deep hole in one minute as it does to lift two men out of the same hole in two minutes. And the same power to lift that poor, much maligned miner out of a 20 metre hole in two minutes. Run the maths, I tried it. Okay, end of nerdy bit. The bottom line is this. You need lots of power when you either want to exert large force, travel a large distance, or go at a high speed. Now, for the horse part of horsepower. History textbooks out, please, for this, uh, because we are going to be going back to the 1800s. Before the Industrial Revolution, before we could rely on internal combustion engines for all of our hauling needs, the workhorse of industry was none other than the workhorse. Easily trained and cared for, horses were used for a multitude of heavy tasks. Pulling boats along canals, pulling ploughs through fields, pulling coal out of mines. Basically, a heck of a lot of pulling. The heavier something was, the more power you need to pull it, so the more horses you'd need. So at the time, it seemed natural to measure the amount of work you had to do by the number of horses it would take to do your pulling. Therefore, defining your pulling power or horsepower. Now this became especially relevant to the clever people who were marketing the earliest steam engines. They said, ladies and gentlemen, why waste money on buying, feeding and caring for a whole herd of workhorses when you can buy a lovely shiny new steam engine? Yep, this little beauty does the work of 10, 20, 100 ponies with none of the manure shoveling. Suddenly, it became rather important to find out exactly what was the pulling power of a horse so that these newfangled engines could be faithfully marketed. Enter James Watt. You may have heard of him, at least one of the units that he invented. Watt? Yes, the Watt. Terrible, terrible pun. James Watt is credited with inventing the first unit of horsepower. He figured out that a horse raising a weight up a mine shaft would be able to produce a power of 33,000 foot-pounds per minute, which is pretty meaningless, I think you'll agree, and that is exactly why he defined the watt. This single horsepower is equivalent to 746 watts, roughly the power of a mid-range microwave. And thinking about it in more practical terms, and remembering how power is defined, Watt's calculation of horsepower means that a single horse should be able to lift a 75 kilogram mass, which is roughly the weight of a person, by one meter every second. But what does all this mean? What can I do with all the horsepower that these modern engines can produce? 
Can I use my 635 brake horsepower convertible to lift 635 average size adults out of a meter deep hole in one second? Yes, but that's just the beginning of it. In engines, horsepower or brake horsepower, which describes the raw pulling power of the engine without any mechanical losses, can be used to produce lots of speed or to produce a lot of force. It all lies in the crucial relationship between three things. Power, torque, that's the turning force of the engine, and revolutions per minute. Race car engines are able to produce very high rotational speeds, which, when combined with essentially a really moderate torque, produce around 800 to 900 brake horsepower. But the thing is, when those cars are faced with anything other than a nice, smooth, flat, open road, their relatively low torque isn't enough to take the strain. Compare that with the engine of a heavy-duty tractor or plower. Now, these green demons won't be winning any speed records, that's for sure, but you'll be thanking them when you're next stranded in a quagmire. The engine doesn't spin very fast, but these workhorses use massive torques to pull heavy weights and navigate the most challenging terrain, producing up to 500 horsepower at a top speed of only around 40 miles per hour. That makes them truly the shire horses of the hauling world. In fact, the highest horsepower produced in an engine to date is by the 2,300 tonne diesel engines powering gigantic cargo ships that are ploughing the world's oceans. These beasts produce enough torque to rip a tank to pieces, with a whopping 109,000 horsepower and breakneck speeds of 31 knots, which is 35 miles per hour to us landlubbers. So you see, you don't really need ridiculous speed to get at true power. Right, that's the science done behind horsepower. Shall we take a look at what 635 brake horsepower looks like? Yes, yes we shall. Hey, Check out our film of the Jer Falcon versus Bentley Continental GT Speed. Click here for that. Click here to subscribe. Oh my word, that was fast. Woo! Oh, thanks, Mads. <laughs>